Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to show you the entire life cycle of a wild wasp nest we discovered in the soffit space of a house in northeast Indiana during our 2022 wasp season. We created an observation door out of the soffit metal so we could film this nest without disturbing it as it developed to full maturity in the wild throughout the season. This was a beneficial species of paper wasp native to North America called Polistes fuscatus, or northern paper wasp. We were able to document the foundress or the queen and her subordinate co-foundress when they first began the nest in April, then the first female workers hatched out early in the season, and the reproductive males and females were born later in the season. We followed this nest all the way through November of 2022 when it was finally abandoned for the season. We also documented how these wasps forage for food and how they collect the wood fiber that they build their nest cells with. We even got to see how one of the foundress wasps actually constructed a cell on her nest with that wood fiber putty that she creates with her saliva. This episode was filmed between April and November of 2022. It's always fascinating to observe the changes in a wild wasp nest up close over an extended period of time. Thanks for riding along with us. If you have fun visiting our channel, please like, subscribe, and comment to let us know you're there. Now let's go to April 2022 when we first discovered the foundress wasp engaged in nesting behavior at the opening of the soffit in the roof line. April 23rd, 2022, some wasps coming in here. And it turns out right here in this area of the soffit, right over here, there's a little hole and the wasps are starting a nest in there and there's already some active foragers coming and going from that nest. So I'm going to set up the camera today and capture them. Here comes one now. All right, what I'm going to try to do now is rig up the camera uh, hanging here by itself. So over the next five minutes or so of this episode, you're going to see how this foundress forages for nest building material and nectar for herself to get energy to build the nest. You're going to see how many times she goes in and out of this space in a couple of hours. We've only shown the entry and exit points. Everything else was edited out. But you'll see how active they are. So if you see a wasp doing this coming in and out of a space somewhere on your property at this time of year in the spring they are clearly building a nest at that point and you can expect to see a colony develop in whatever space they're in and most of the species of polistes wasps we have in north america are very beneficial insects so if you do see them somewhere on your property please let them live uh, they're very very good for the local ecosystem so unless they are directly threatening people, which they rarely do, you want to leave these in place. Over this five minute period, we're watching these wasps come and go. You may notice there's more than one foundress, or there seems to be more than one adult wasp setting up this nest. This is very common behavior with Polistes wasp of several species. So we'll talk more about that after we watch them foraging here for a minute. If you do find yourself in a situation where you need to remove a polistes nest, uh, just understand that you don't need to kill it by any means, and please don't poison it. If you have to remove it, you can relocate this if you wear proper protection so you don't get stung. Uh, you can take this nest and simply set it up somewhere else. Uh, carefully remove it with the pedicel intact. That's the little part that connects the nest to the ceiling or wherever you find it in the eaves or whatever and simply super glue it or hot glue it into a different location put it up somewhere else and the nest will continue on if you need help with that you can call a professional to take care of it if you do have to kill a nest sometimes that happens especially if you have say polistes dominula which is an invasive species the european paper wasp then you can simply hit it with soap and water 
Just a spray bottle filled with soap and water will knock them down and kill them with no need for poison at all. But it's always best just to leave these alone. These are the natives. They belong in the ecosystem. They will help your garden with garden pest removal because they feed their larvae live insects and caterpillars, insects in the larval stage. And many of those are garden pests. So these guys will really help you out. They'll help reduce the bug population around your yard and they'll protect your garden. There's just nothing negative about these at all. If you treat them with respect, they simply ignore human beings. They don't care about us at all. We don't even register in their consciousness, as far as I can tell, unless we directly threaten their nest. I mean, as you can see here, we had a relatively large camera phone directly up inches away from the opening of their nest and inside the cavity they were nesting in often throughout this period of time we made this film and they never once were aggressive toward us at all. Here on April 27th, we got the scope cam out and we put the cam into the space uh, to see what we could find. Sure enough, there was a small nest being built. There were fresh eggs in the cells. There was just a few cells at that point, maybe four or five. And the foundress was working on that nest, laying the initial eggs. These will be the first few workers that will help her get that nest going. So today we are taking the soffit piece that covers the wasp nest off of the soffit and we're going to take a peek at that nest. Here you can see the nest we located the other day. Here we have at least two guarding the nest. There is the foundress, which is the one on the nest most likely, and the subordinate, which is the one on the right. Because it's too early to have been born in the nest, so I think they probably both were involved in building it. Palistes wasps, like the Fuscatus, will definitely build in tandem sometimes with a couple of subordinates or one subordinate, and that helps the nest thrive. But the subordinate must remain a subordinate. If the dominant foundress finds the subordinate trying to lay eggs, for example, she'll eat those eggs and she'll run off the subordinate. But the subordinates can be very helpful in keeping a nest going. They provide extra protection and extra foraging, and eventually they'll help maintain the nest and feed the larva. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take this duct tape and we're gonna Put a piece of tape on each end of this soffit piece so that we can just open it up like a door whenever we want to check on our friends in here and see how they're doing. Now you'll notice that they don't immediately attack and that is because they are paper wasps and they are relatively benign to human activity so long as we don't bother them directly. There's one in there. There she is. Hi. She's guarding. As you can see, they're pretty mellow while we explore their nest. Uh, not attacking. Uh, they make pretty good neighbors as long as you don't mess with them too hard.
You'll notice here that when the wasp is out foraging for wood fiber, she'll use her own fluids that she'll regurgitate onto the wood, and that will soften the wood with the enzymes in her saliva, and then she'll start stripping that wood fiber down and rolling it up into a little ball, which she tucks under her chin, and she'll fly that ball back to the nest and build the nest with it. And we'll show you what that looks like a little bit later in the video. We watch her build an entire cell. May 16th, 22. I'm going to take a look at the Callisti's nest. Well, sure enough, somebody's home.
The nest has gotten substantially larger since we saw it. Let's see if we can get some shots from underneath it. Here comes a forager back to the nest. What you see here is the subordinate co-foundress who comes back from foraging and as she enters the nest you're going to see some aggressive behavior from the primary foundress of this nest and this aggressive behavior this lunging at her you see how the foundress on the nest lunges at the subordinate that is dominance behavior it tells the subordinate that you are a forager you are not to lay eggs on this nest you are just here to support me and help these eggs survive. The dominant foundress will need all the help she can get to help this nest come to fruition. And studies have shown that co-foundress nests actually do better. They're healthier, uh, they survive better, they thrive more. But the dominant foundress must keep control of the nest. So you'll see as the subordinate comes back, It'll come back with nectar, it'll come back with protein, it'll come back with nest building material. This is probably a dominance display where the two co-foundresses are now establishing who is the dominant queen. I assume that's the one clinging to the nest. She seems aggressive towards the other one. And that's how they establish dominance. I want to try to get the camera angle so I can see inside the nest, see if there's any larvae yet that appear to be silk capped off for the pupating stage or attempting to uh, come out of pupation into adult. June 15th, 22, checking on the Lusty's Fuscatus nest. There's Mama. Good afternoon. Well, look at you with lots of silk caps and everything. That's great.
Looking good there, Mama. You're gonna have some uh, workers emerging from pupation stage very soon here. Here you see one of the adults return to the nest with a ball of gray wood pulp under her chin. She's malluxated that now and made it soft and pliable. This is the material she pulled from the fence posts and around the garden that you saw in earlier footage here. She's going to step up to one of the cells at the top of the frame here in a minute and begin building that cell wall to make it longer and taller. You'll see her walk up to it here in just a second and begin applying that wood pulp which will dry out and become another cell. Here she begins work on it. And she works really incredibly fast to extend the walls of these cells by taking the putty and squeezing it and forming it with her mandibles into more of a cell wall. And what you see is the dark part of the cell wall is the new putty she's putting on and that will dry soon to the same color as the rest of the cells. You can see two new eggs in the new cells to the left of the one she's working on. And she'll continually lay eggs in the outer cells that she builds. If you look at her antennas while she works, you can see that she's using the antennas extensively to help her navigate how the cell is formed. And each one of these cells is so perfectly uniform, it's pretty incredible how sensitive the organs are, these antennas. So a vast majority of input that she gets from a sensory standpoint comes through those antennas in just about everything she does. So you see it took her exactly two minutes to make that cell wall as tall as the others around that same ring of cells. It's very quick work. Some of your guys came out already. You'll notice the newly hatched adults who came out of pupation have the black eyes, like the one on the bottom and the one on the left. The one on the right is probably the mother, the foundress or queen. Well, they look great. And there's new eggs in the outer cells you can see. What's up guys? Welcome to the world. They would have just been born here in the last couple of days.
few new pupated adults. One peeking at me from up on the top of the corner.
still alive and active in there. And we're just going to let them stay for the length of the season that they survive. We taped up their entrance for them so they can just hang out in safety until winter. November 2nd, 2022. We're going to take a look at the Polistes fuscatus nest that's been living up in this soffit space all season. sign of life on it at the moment. So this brings an end to this nest for the season. It was a very successful nest and the reason for that is it found a good hidden away protected space, a cavity to form the nest in. The same species we had on an outer space under the eaves of a barn on the property and that one was attacked by parasites and it was attacked by other wasps and it did not survive and we're working on another video which we'll post at some point about that other nest that did not survive but this one did specifically because of its location so this was a very successful nest overall it produced many females many males and hopefully they went out and mated and they'll propagate the species for the next season after their queens who are impregnated overwinter and hibernate they wake up in the spring, they should all start new colonies, and we'll keep a lookout for those. It's always good to see our native species survive. Our native Polistes wasps in upstate Indiana and throughout North America are very important beneficial insects. So if you ever see these around your property, let them live, let them survive. They belong here and we need them. They're important biological control agents that help control many pest insects and they also help in pollination. These guys are your friends. As always, thanks again for being here to watch the latest episode. We hope to see you on the next one. Have a good one.